New data has revealed a rise in teachers claiming workers' compensation following a spate of classroom assaults. Peter Fegan is following this story from Brisbane. No hiding from the numbers. 379 teachers this year already have been assaulted. They have put work cover claims in. That is up 30% on this time last year. And so if it's prompted the LNP, the opposition party here in Queensland, to go on the attack, they've accused the Education Minister, Grace Grace, here in Queensland, of losing control of her portfolio. Of course, the Minister is hit back by saying that, yes, uh, assaults against teachers is unacceptable. But she did point out that 379 teachers is less than 1% of the 55,000 and teachers we have here in Queensland. But so $73.5 million has already been paid out. Now, the union says $70-odd million is better spent on preventative measures, and they do agree that, yes, 379 or less than 1% is a very small fraction, but it is still too many. Well, joining me live is Dr Terry Goldsworthy, criminal justice and criminology expert. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us. Um, pretty sure you may have heard those stats there. What do you make of them if you did hear it? Oh, look, I think they're just uh, an indication of the wider problem that we have here in Queensland in terms of youth crime. I mean, we know from the data that there's been a 14% increase in the amount of youth crime offences being committed in Queensland in the last reporting period. Uh, and what we're seeing is youth offenders uh, being massively overrepresented in offences such as assaults, robberies, stolen cars and break and enters. So, you know, you, you say that uh, you can look at that in a general population, general community and then I guess you'll see a subset of that happen in the classroom as well. There's also been a lot of news this week about abuse of retail workers along with teachers. What are you hearing? Well look I mean I think uh, there's a real problem in terms of getting you know some young people uh, you know in, to accept what the appropriate manners and behaviours are in society and that comes back to, a, I guess, a fracturing and breakdown in terms of good parenting occurring in the home. And we know that the causations of youth offending are multifactorial, that there's usually uh, drug use, DV in the home, the child is disengaged from education. So, you know, it is difficult for those children to get a sense of balance in terms of getting their compass right for what is acceptable behaviour. You know, they see certain behaviours in the home and they think that's how you normalise your relationships with people and then they go out and abuse members of the public. And it's unfortunate the child is exposed to that, but that's where the, the root cause comes from in many cases and that's what we need to try to fix. Do you think the age of offenders are getting younger and has the way crime being undertaken regarding increased violence getting worse? Yeah, look, uh, Victorian Crime Stats Authority released some good information on 10 to 13-year-old offenders, and there's been no great increase in those age groups offending. In terms of violent offenders, yeah, I do think we are seeing increases in that. If you look at Queensland data, it tells us over the last 10 years the greatest offences to increase are things like robbery and assaults, drug use amongst youth offenders. So all of those things combine to produce violent behaviour. Um, you know, so it's problematic. I mean, we also have the influence of social media where, you know, the more violent you can be, the more outrageous your behaviour, etc., the more likes you will get. And uh, it reflects, I guess, legitimate social media where people only look at videos that they find interesting. So from a criminal aspect, to make it interesting, you have to behave worse. And Dr Godsworthy, you mentioned parents before having a significant responsibility in, in you know, educating their children in the, in the correct way. So not only parents, but do you think more needs to be done with governments, with school, with education? Are we punishing our children enough or what ways could we learn? Yeah, look, I mean, uh, you know, expelling and suspending isn't necessarily the answer. There, there is some um, studies that have shown that that's actually a pathway to criminality because what eventually happens is they get suspended, expelled, they go home, uh, because there's no actual parenting occurring in the home anyway, they just then go out and commit uh, get their form of criminal behaviour. So I think it's, um, you know, identifying what is happening at home. School is only a, a part of the picture. You know, we can't expect school to do our parenting for us. And I think many parents think, think that is what school is there for. Um, you know, unfortunately, we have driving tests. We have all kinds of tests to make sure people are competent and things. 
but we really have no test for people who go on to be parents. I mean, uh, there's no qualification you need to become a parent. It's one of the most challenging things we ever do in our lives. Yeah, very well said indeed. Well, Dr. Terry Goldsworthy, we do have to wrap it up there, but thank you very much as always for your time today. Thanks, Jenny.